All right, thank you, Caitlin. In other news tonight, an international investigation is underway after a weakened hostage situation at a Texas synagogue. Lawmakers say the incident shows anti-Semitism is alive and well. He was talking about Israel, Palestine, Islam, and that he had a gun. Um, he um, implied he had a bomb in his backpack. It was horrifying. Malik Faisal Akram, a British national who traveled to the U.S. in recent weeks, inter uh, interrupted a Saturday Shabbat service by taking a rabbi and three others hostage at gunpoint. Investigators say he was motivated by his demand to release a convicted terrorist who's serving a sentence for plotting to kill U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. The 11-hour ordeal ended with all of the hostages safe and the suspect dead. Law enforcement are now stepping up security at Jewish synagogues and schools across the country. And let's bring in Ellie Kohanim, former deputy special envoy to combat anti-Semitism. Ellie, great to have you. Welcome. I, I want to start with the FBI and a statement that it put out on Saturday night. It upset a lot of people. It dismissed, essentially, concerns of anti-Semitism. The FBI saying that the demands were not specifically related to the Jewish community. What did you make of the statement? Jenna, first of all, it's wonderful to be with you and to be with CBN today. I have to tell you that the incident on Saturday was such a classically anti-Semitic event where you have a radical Islamist entering a synagogue, a place of worship, and holding hostage a rabbi and Jewish worshipers. And so, you know, right there, kind of looking at the facts straight off the bat, it was a little shocking for us to see the FBI not understand this attack immediately as a hate crime, as an anti-Semitic attack. Now, the good news is that the FBI since that time has announced that they are investigating it as a terror incident and they understand the, that this was a hate crime. What it shows me, Jenna, is that even our law enforcement and our very own FBI, which gathers statistics on hate crimes every year, and the FBI statistics most recently show that Jews are the greatest victims of hate crimes in this country, receiving about 54 percent of uh, being the victims of about 54 percent of all hate crimes that are religiously motivated. What it shows me is that even our own FBI is not as aware and educated and trained on these issues of anti-Semitism as they should be. Yeah. Uh, Ellie, I know you've called for a domestic anti-Semitism SAR in the U.S. even before this attack ever happened. Do you think that this attack has, you know, given this a, a renewed sense of urgency or, um, you know, will push, push for that harder? Jenna, I certainly hope so. And the reason I wrote that piece in Newsweek back in June is that I served as the deputy envoy to combat anti-Semitism in the State Department. And I always remind people, the State Department is like our foreign ministry. So the mandate that I had and the special envoy had is purely a global mandate. So we were there only to be America's voice on global anti-Semitism. And we had no domestic mandate whatsoever. whatsoever Ever, that's by uh, the laws of the United States Congress. And so if we want uh, someone in the United States to be a point person on our domestic anti-Semitism issues, which is something that I did advocate for, then we need a new position to be created. And I very much hope the Biden administration will find motivation following this attack and appoint someone to be a domestic anti-Semitism czar. All right. A former deputy special envoy to combat anti-Semitism, Ellie Kohanim. Thank you so much, Ellie. It's great to have you on this evening. Great to be with you.